Attention all podcasts of the Solar Federation. We have assumed control. We have assumed control. We have assumed control. The intergalactic boombox. So, I warned my daughter about using her whistle inside, and I gave her one last chance. Oh, really? Unfortunately, she blew it. Oh, man, that sucks. Hey, what you call a man with no limbs lying in a pile of leaves? I don't know. Russell, big what-ups to Zyka boy. He boosted 21 sats just to give us a crappy dad joke. Okay, Zyka boy. All right, hear me out. Okay. What does Jeff Bezos do before bed? He puts his pajamas on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Intergalactic Boombox, Better Late Than Never edition. Yeah, we're a podcasting spaceship. I don't know why I'm saying we. It's just me. I'm Kyle Hebert, voice actor. I talk to myself for a living and on this podcast because I can. Oh, jeez, Drew, don't do that. I'm Drew Grime. I know you're Drew Grime. Well, perhaps your new listener doesn't yet. Who cares? They don't know that I host a true crime podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to know what it's called? Uh, all you need is kill. Nice English. The manga of which the excellent Tom Cruise sci-fi romp Edge of Tomorrow is based. Yeah, yeah, great movie. Awful name. The slogan on the home video release, Live, Die, Repeat. Now that's what they should have called the movie. Uh, Anyway, Drew Grime of the Drew Grime True Crime Podcast. That's me. I got a mystery that you can try and solve. Oh. Where did Matt Smith's eyebrows go? Ah. The most excellent top. Right? Sometimes they're barely there. Mostly, they're never there. Yeah. As the young people say, what's up with that? <sighs> who knows? I highly doubt that. Huh? Who? Uh, who are you talking about? That's right. But he's a fictional character. Who? Matt Smith? Yes, Matt Smith was once a who. Oh, yeah, Matt Smith. He was a, he was a doctor. No, but he played one on TV. <sighs> anyway, the Intergalactic Boombox is brought to you by an insert latest TikTok meme song, which won't be played because it was out of the public conscience before I could finish this sentence. But congrats to Ghost for Mariana Cross going viral and becoming a, a huge hit, at least in the in the UK. <laughs> right now, it's time to honor those who throw some podcasting 2.0 value for value love in this general direction. Something that's not possible in Apple, Spotify, or any mainstream app. You want to stream micropayments to podcasters you enjoy in the app as you listen? You need a podcasting 2.0 player app. Totally free from newpodcastapps.com. Then you can be a sad cat <coughs> streaming Satoshis. Sats, the smallest unit of Bitcoin, worth fractions of a penny. One dollar is roughly worth 5,000 Satoshis. Ah. Hobbit Nuts gave a thousand sats and says these sats are for the aliens. Thank them for the wacky space tobacco. Thank you, Gits and Shiggles. Hey, thanks, Hobbit Nuts. These nuts. <laughs> Saints and Sats gave 475 sats. And says, this one's for Ken. Conspiracy. Saints and Sats just boosted you nine cents. All right, knock it off, Herbert. I'll have you know that that internet funny money is a bunch of bulgogi. Okay. It's another ploy by the Illuminati. You can keep your nine cents. Oh, I have an idea. Why don't you give your writers a raise, Herbert? Uh, I I can't afford to pay myself a wage comparable to dubbing anime, but thanks for the sentiment. Oh, go skinny dip in a septic tank. I'm done with you. You hear me, Herbert? All right. Dunion rings. Yummy. Now leave me alone. I gotta work on my news segment. Be gone, unclean spirit. Okay, so if you want to get a limited edition intergalactic boombox sticker, you got to boost at least twenty five thousand sats in a podcasting two point app. That's equivalent to about five dollars. That'll cover shipping to U.S. residents only at this time. Sorry, if you're listening to this podcast on Apple, Spotify, Overcast, Pocket Cast, iHeart Radio, Stitcher, you don't get to see the images display. But if you have a podcasting 2.0 app right now, like Fountain, Podverse, Castomatic, Podfriend, among others, if you glance at your phone or web browser with CurioCaster right now, you can see what that sticker looks like. Otherwise, you're missing out. So boost at least twenty-five thousand sats. Include your email address in the message. I'll get in touch with you. Get your address so I can mail you your sticker. I'm trying to not only pimp out this podcast, but get more people on board with the awesomeness of Podcasting 2.0, value for value. It's not Patreon or a set donation. It's a customized gift. You give back to podcasters for the worth you're getting out of listening to their shows. Value for value. Apparently, Conspiracy's presence was worth nine cents. I'm worth more than you! Okay, you can boost any amount you want at any time as the show plays back in these Podcasting 2.0 apps. Meet us from the Fun Fact Friday podcast says, Sticker me, Kyle! He boosted 26,334 sats. Chimp98 boosted 33,126 sats and says, boosting for butter. Ken talked about the butter drink from Japan last week. Hey, Chimp, you qualify to receive a uh, a bumper sticker. Are you in the U.S.? Let me know if you want to get one. Either way, thanks for helping support the show. 
Rasta Calavera gave a thousand sats and says, Nice call out to view image chapters. Stickers are dope. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Rasta. Pocket Parley. Or is it Pocket Parley? Still waiting for you to send me your actual address, dude. You wanted a sticker. Kyle at KyleABear.com. Pocket Parley just uh, boosted 5,700 sats. Says, man, Kyle, it's great to hear you. Get off that spaceship and go on the Podcasting 2.0 show. Yeah, not just a man of many voices. Intelligent to boost. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, you guys, I was a guest on Adam Curry and Dave Jones' Podcasting 2.0 podcast. So go back and listen to episode 102 called Down With O. OP3 had lots of fun. It was an honor to get to be on the show. The question of the week. VR, yay or nay? Rich Rose gave a thousand sats and says, honestly, I couldn't care less about any of the VR crap. Shinto Genesis says, I personally have the Quest 1 and PSVR 1, and I dig both greatly. So I have to imagine the new stuff must be amazing. Based on my limited headsets, I'd probably wait on the new Quest if it doesn't take too long. Only because of the ease of use on Quest is literal magic to me. Little Karibo says, when it's good, it's great. There's a lot of pretty shallow stuff out there, but there's enough amazing content that makes it worth the purchase. No Man's Sky in VR or Half-Life Alex are essential gaming experiences. Lord Comet says VR is great. Waiting for DBZ ones where people can toss Kamehameha's around. Yeah, right. That would be awesome. As long as my character Gohan can do a little special beam cannon! Go into beast form and everything. Sage the Saterran says, I've been having a lot of fun with the HTC Vive headset. Can't do too many games that require open space or standing, but the sitting games are good. Aldrike says, I want PSVR 2 a lot. Wish PSVR had been better planned out so 2 could play the old games. What? It's not backwards compatible? We should riot, y'all. Zeus says, hopefully the second SKU of PSVR 2 has a wireless option. Oh, yeah, right? That sucks. As cool as it's going to be, you're still going to be tethered. So the Meta Quest definitely has a one-up on that one. Kyle Kilgore says, sticking with my Quest 2 for the next two years at least. Cross Trash says, sticking with the Quest. PSVR 2 having zero backwards compatibility is yet another reason for me to never buy a PS5. Toru Loli Dragon says, as a person who mainly games in VR, I say absolutely go for the Valve Index on Steam. The full kit is about a grand, but it's absolutely worth it. No question. Thoughts on Andor? The latest Star Wars TV series has launched on Disney+. Plus. First three episodes are up as of this recording. I have seen episode one. It is really good. I mean, if you if you like that whole vibe that's gritty and grime in Rogue One, but I'm glad it, they didn't just post the first episode because it doesn't exactly end on a huge cliffhanger. But I am on board. I love the whole Rogue One universe and the way it's portrayed. Oh, joy. South of the Rockies, you are on the air. Um, hello. Hello, Karen. What do you think about Andor? What's with your trick question, Kirk? What do you mean? And... Or? Yeah? Why are you trying to confuse me with your grammar shenanigans? No, Andor. Captain Cassian Andor from Rogue One. Why would they name anyone after conjunctivitis? What? Just... Uh... Oh, conjunction. Oh, oh, conjunction. Ah, hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Ah, you're so old, Curtis. Look, you were the one that referenced Schoolhouse Rock from the 70s. Mm-hmm, and you recognized it. Touche. Leave my tushy out of it, perv. Okay, bye bye Andor, the new Star Wars series on Disney+, Plus, a prequel to Rogue One, which is a prequel to A New Hope, which is a sequel to the Star Wars prequels. Not confusing at all. Have you caught any of the first three episodes that I've posted as of this recording? Are you avoiding it? And you kind of feel like Star Wars jumped the shark with all these TV shows? Or jump the bantha or whatever. Boost your replies. Boost. On a Podcasting 2.0 app, you'll be interacting with the show and supporting it. It's a win-win. Or just reply at BoomboxPod on Twitter. It wasn't faithful to the comic, but man, do I love Keanu Reeves' take on Constantine. Warner Brothers may be in the doghouse with a lot of fans because of their hacking and slashing of projects and cancellations and such, but Gizmodo, among many other sources, are now reporting that Keanu will be reprising his first John years before Wick. The big screen John Constantine wasn't the snarky blonde Brit in a trench coat. That wouldn't come to pass till years later with Matt Ryan's small screen interpretation. But the character, as a cancer-ridden chain smoker, they did keep. Plus... It's Keanu, a dark supernatural action horror flick that still holds up ever since it first dropped in 2005. And director Francis Lawrence is set to return, as well as screenwriter Akiva Goldsman. No plot points or other cast announcements yet. It'd be cool if they bring back Lucifer, though. Peter Stormare. <laughs> This 
This sounds like it's so crazy, it just might work. Now, we all know podcasting distribution is across streaming, right? It's not radio, TV, or film. But now a forward-thinking streaming company, Luminary, are thinking outside the box by bringing a podcast to vinyl. Yeah, a, a record album that you play on a turntable. The first podcast to be placed into physical media, as far as I'm aware. The Midnight Miracle, which is hosted by Dave Chappelle and friends, currently sits behind a paywall, but it is out there for you to sample. Luminary's CEO Rishi Maholtra says, quote, With the launch of The Midnight Miracle, we imagined a new original audio format, inclusive of important conversation, music, archival stories, and ultimately a show that rethinks what a podcast can be. Our view is that great audio experiences deserve to be translated beyond digital into live performances and preserved in physical formats, unquote. The Midnight Miracle is described as a variety show podcast with convos with comedians, musicians, artists, skits, archival clips. And for $50, you can get the limited edition vinyl disc featuring two fan fave episodes. It's got marble swirl colored vinyl, an inner sleeve gatefold jacket, and it comes with a one year subscription to Luminary, which is normally just $35 on its own. So it's actually a really good deal. Check the link in the show notes or click on the link in the chapter art displaying on a podcasting 2.0 app. As you listen to my voice right now, check out the deets. They are not a sponsor. I'm not getting any kickbacks here, but I am really, really intrigued by this idea. I'm a vinyl lover and collector and a podcaster and a voice actor. So I'm wondering if maybe a future compilation of intergalactic boombox stuff or maybe some exclusive material, would that be of any interest and have it available only as a vinyl record? Hmm. Boost on a podcasting 2.0 app or at Boombox Pod on Twitter. Let me know if I'm totally crazy for wanting to do something like this. From my top secret underground bunker in Pahrump, Nevada, the place that sounds like it's named after a body part, Conspiracy with all the news you can't use. Page one. Doctors and ER workers not only are overworked and have to put up with total idiots, they also happen to have the best stories about things that had to be yanked out of bodily orifices. Especially notable when the person breaks a new world record. A 66-year-old lady in Dublin has quite the collection of triple A's. I'm not talking about her chesticles, either. You see, this broad has the kind of eating disorder that made her crave things that definitely aren't food. Doctors and surgeons had their work cut out for them due to her colon and stomach being filled with over 50 batteries. They had to open up her gut to retrieve most of them. A handful managed to breach the balloon knot. Ugh, all things shall pass. If you're ever near an old lady who's vibrating, just stay in your lane. Page 2. Unlike Molly McDipstick from the previous story, some people actually want to get carved up and filleted for the sake of vanity. Cosmetic surgeons nip and tuck, creating living wax museum rejects. I want to look younger. I want to be thinner. I want to spend all this money that could be used on something that could actually help the world, but nah. Doc, I challenge you to cure me mentally by butchering me physically. <laughs> Who wants to be a few inches taller? You with the hair? How about you? Who wouldn't want a few extra inches? Get your mind out of the gutter. Well, if you have a hundred grand and are tired of missing out on concerts and movies because everyone's blocking your view, sure, Doc's going to add some height. You just need to be tortured in agonizing pain for at least three months as your thigh bones get Hassan chopped and titanium or stainless steel nails are driven in. This procedure is wildly popular with the tech industry, who really put the manure in entrepreneurs. Ew. Page three, the cinnamon challenge, Tide Pods. The list goes on as the youth of today and ensure us older, wiser people will die alone. The latest challenge is consuming chicken breasts marinated in NyQuil. <laughs> Boiling meds can essentially get rid of the water content and concentrate the meds, so suddenly you're at risk for damaging your liver, your heart, your lungs, blood pressure, and even risk falling into a coma. Is that worth a few clicks and follows? Why, I'd just as soon eat batteries and take a baseball bat to my legs before Ben Grimm can yell it's clobbering time. <laughs> and I'm spent. That's all the news you can't use. Conspiracy here, and you're all a bunch of morons. Ah, uh, look at the time. The Intergalactic Boombox is 100% dolphin safe, loaded with gluten and lactose out of pure spite, and only begins to lose flavor after 33 minutes of chewing it. Remember, kids, as the internet warns, when your significant other says what, it isn't because they didn't hear you. It's because they're giving you a chance to change what you said. Until next time, doodles.